a little bit more speed possibly. I purposely haven't tightened the drill chuck in case it does bite like that and I want it riving this thing on my hand. So that's two done. Make right, sure so that's bolted onto there. That's going to be in the centre of the cast and the cont and anything else. But we can scrape around here. There's only mountain bolts protruding through. If you look at the casting. That's been ground off here for some reason. So if we draw a straight line down the same as that one, that'll still be hidden. I'm quite happy with that's turned out. I was quite a puzzle how I was going to line things up, but it, uh, it worked not too bad in the end. Like I say, these holes and plates will be slotted slightly, so it's got a little bit of room to finally line it up. The coupling's going to go in there. This is the bottom, so I'm going to open that up like that, just so I can get in to work on it to, uh, to tighten the coupling up. Anyway, a little bit more done. If only I grind in aluminium, you use a floppy disc like that. If you put some candle wax onto the disc like that, it stops the disc from clogging up. Candle wax stops the disc from building up with aluminium and makes it cut much smoother and cleaner. Using a carbide burr and a die grinder, once again, if you load it up with what kind of wax, it stops it from clogging up with aluminium cuttings. Bastard. So the cutter is clean where normally the aluminium melts into the cutter. Happy with that now.
means I can get into there and work on the coupling. I've trimmed off the excess from the original end casing and just a little bit dress up with a fire just to blend things in nicely. Some long screws and just to line that up and I'll tap it down. Right, that's all the way home now, nice and free. And then the adapter plate that we've made goes onto there. That bit's at the bottom. I'll put the. Doesn't really make a difference which way it goes. Doesn't make any difference at all, really. Right, so we need some suitable length screws. Probably those ones I did buy some screws of different lengths. Those ones seem to be going to do the job quite nicely. I'm going to put a little bit of Loctite on them just to make sure but I'm wondering if I should open some of this out to let air through the, the dynamo, I just don't know don't know how hot it'll get it's fastened to a big aluminium casting so it should dissipate the heat there's no fan on this obviously there can't be a fan on it They need to go slightly deeper than not quite deep enough. You've got to be down below that face just to if Fanny's hair more with the counter sink tool will do that. Fine, they're all below the surface now. Right, so the, the plates are now bolted onto there. That goes onto there. I've opened them holes out a little bit, just so it's got a little bit of wiggle room. Some decent washers. Work with nuts, work with nuts and bolts always on vintage stuff. cut down the right length there's nothing worse than bolts in that are too long it looks horrible okay, so once it drives in that's got a little bit of movement once it drives all lined up that can be tightened up solid and it's uh, I'm quite happy with that there's a bit of time spent on it but it's that needs to come off there, I'll cut that off. Well, it's starting to look apart now. And you look in there, that's definitely in the middle. And I have got access room in there to work on that on that coupling, what I just decided to do about it or with it.
We've just cut this strip of steel to them, I think it is. I need to roll it into a ring and it's going to form a tapered ring, which is the base for the chimney on a small steam launch. So this rolling jig we've got from Vivo should do the job quite nicely. When it's welded, put a throw again, it'll take that flat spot out of it. Right, I'm going to weld it and put it back in. Right, that's enough force on those to to drive it, that's the bit I'm interested in there. Let's see if we can get that there. That little bit there, it's not bad. Happy with that. A little bit tap on a round mandrel there is going to finish it off, but it's pretty good. You can see the way it's tapered so the funnel lies back over. I've got the piece cut out for the top, it just wants a little bit trim so it just drops inside of there. That's the actual lid that goes onto there, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to beat a weld all the way around. To give the lid something to locate on. You see it there, that's the sort of thing I want to try and create. So I'll just run some filler wire around the outside of that. And I'll probably either grind it on the milling machine just to square it up. But it's certainly starting to take shape now. I'll try and get some decent arc shots if it's been welded. This is the setup I'm using on this TIG 261 AC DC welder. If you look up here, I'm on AC and I'm on easy set. I just use the easy settings for all of it now. It's so simple. I'm right, using a 2.4mm tungsten. My welding 5mm aluminium. It's an outside corner joint. And I've got the pulse set at 0.5 Hz. That's one of the stock settings. You can go up to 5 of course you can go into the manual mode and set it to anything you want really. And I'm using a pedal. It's given us 160 amps as a starting point. I can go down 10 or I can go up 10. 160 amps sounds about right to me. That's built up quite nicely. A little bit of work with the little machine, the little fit on there quite nicely. And then we can weld the, the top in, and a little bit more done. You see, the trouble is, I've got two of the bastard things to make. So, take it down to the little machine, mill it flat, and then tidy the edges up. I've got it clamped down on the milling table. It has actually warped slightly with welding it, I thought it might. That's WD-40 type lubricant, it, uh, it really helps when cutting aluminium. Paraffin or kerosene works as well but it's got a horrible smell which yeah, it doesn't like in the house. The 
it doesn't need a massive lift, it's just going to stop the lid from sliding off. It's not far away, not far away at all. It's a little bit more off already on the around the outside and I didn't say taken away but it'll be it's not far away at all that. Right happy with that, that's nice. See the lid is held down with a spring anyway, so it lifts up like that and turns. And I'll just dress the inside up with a file and then it can go and weld the lid in. Right, that weld up quite nicely. I'm just going to go over the top of the welds and blend them in because they're going to be ground off to try and make it look like a custom. That's the first time I've had that cooling fan cut in on that new TIG welder, which is quite impressive. Uh, they all welded all that before it's actually cut in. It's kind of starting to take shape a little bit now. I've got one end piece welded on. This piece is next. Once again, it's just time to say thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing. If you haven't subscribed, please click the button, it is important. I've just ruled over 98,000 subscribers, so the magical 100,000 is not very far away. Anyway, thanks for watching.